And beneath, I discovered beneath her plain look, uh, she's someone full of spirit, full of longing, and uh, I just totally understand her wish to see and interact with the bigger world. And of course, she's a rebel. If she conforms the social convention of Victorian England, she would never have found happiness. Um, so she generally become my inspiring model. So here you see the the transforming power of literature. Heroes like Jane Eyre slowly uh, bring down the walls around, around me. So um, looking back now, you know, what I learned from English was not just the ABCs, but the whole culture package. Slowly, I dared to be different. I began to wear short skirt. I was not really encouraged. I'm still wearing short skirts today. <laughs> um, I had boyfriends, and after my English improved, uh, I began to listen to uh, VOA and BBC, which broadcast news very different from our propaganda. And I formed a literary group, and with our friends, we were talking about the politics all the time. It's answer to China. And um, in 1989, just a few days before June 4th, before the terrible crackdown, I organized the biggest demonstration among factory workers um, still in Nanjing in support the democratic movement led by the students in Tiananmen. Um, um, I was very sad to, to see what happened, but I was very proud of the act of uh, defiance because I felt very strongly that individuals can, individuals act can make a uh, difference. Of course, by the time I organized the demonstration mentally, I was already out of my factory well. And phys physically, I jumped out of the factory well in the end of 1990 when I went to England. Once over there, a childhood dream became alive again. I decided to uh, pursue my dream of, of becoming a journalist. So uh, I took a course in journalism. Three years later, after I returned to China, I started my career working for Western journalists as a fixer, assistant, a kind of an interpreter. And, um, and then I decided to become a freelance, um, become, become a journalist of my own rights. While based in China, I write for the Western media in English. Uh, follow my interest, I, um, I focus on stories of common human interest, um, emotionally, physically displaced migrant workers, um, led off workers, or kidnapping women, um, prostu prostitutes, so um, I didn't choose the easy path for myself. And uh, being a Chinese, I did not have any connection with Western media, and my English was not very good. And in fact, you know, after studying English diligently for more than 20 years, I still make the basic mistakes. I'm sure you have noticed. Um, and also, I didn't exactly know how things work in the Western media, but uh, I also felt that I, I enjoy the challenge of being a freelance journalist writing for Western media. And I felt I have something different to offer compared to my Western colleague. Um, I, I felt I have the insight to a Chinese culture, and I, I have a good understanding of where China was coming from. So, uh, so far, I, um, I have managed to publish many articles in many top publications um, around, around the world. Um, I guess here again, the point I want to make is when you dare to step up your usual boundary, and uh, not following the beaten path, you often get richly rewarded. And today now I am, I'm based in China, I'm based in Beijing, working as a writer. I'm just finishing my first novel about prostitution. Um, that's a pure work of fiction. I've done a few things in my life, but not prostitute yet. Um, <laughs> Um, I also was, I'm also work as a journalist, I'm a television talk show host and social commentator and frequently being interviewed by international media. So in many ways I, I'm really living my, my dream life. I feel every day I tell myself how lucky I am. Um, of course I, I think I was lucky, I was born in the right time, China had opened it up. And if I have anything to share, that is um, do not be a frog in a well. Um, I think um, for all of us, uh, at some stage in our life, uh, we would uh, encounter wells in different forms. For example, when I wanted to learn English, some of my colleagues laughed at me as a toad who dreams to eat swan's meat, um, laughing at my effort of learning English. They tried to Try, they tried to place me in a well and tell me things I, cannot, I couldn't do. And I do not ever listen to people like them. 
um, you know, um, do not place yourself in a well. You can just about do anything you want. You can be, it can be anything you want if you follow your dream, follow your passions. Yes, uh, a, a, a factory girl can learn English and master language and write the books in that language. Yes, uh, a former factory girl can get articles published in the New York Times. And yes, a former factory girl can be on the same, on the same footing as an ambassador. Um, just last Sunday, I had an on-stage conversation with Australian ambassador um, talking about um, where China, how far has China come. And of course, sometimes you do not want to be, do not, do not want to place yourself in a well, but you find yourself being pushed into a well. Then I would say that uh, find your inspiration, uh, find your passion. If you follow them, they, they will give you the drive, the strength, and, uh, and the confidence to jump out of the well. Um, after all these years, I still have not managed to eat swan's meat. I have tried many, many things. I, I have competition, I bet I will win. I tried all sorts of weird things but not swan's meat, but uh, nobody calls me a, a toad or a frog anymore. I have long out of my well into this great world, and I just love it. Thank you. Thank you.